Hi, this is Debbie again, and I'm in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of my house. Um, I'm going to keep most things private, but wanted to show you a little bit. I mentioned that I live in a old Victorian. It was built in 1883 by a cattle baron, and um, this is the home we live in, and it is quite large. There are 30 rooms, and the reason that we got it is because the partner, my partner that I live with, has two businesses that he's CEO of. Hmm, I do need to pick up that little fan that keeps blowing off um, of my garden. I keep fans all along my garden edge because that helps to keep squirrels and intruders out of the garden. It actually works pretty well, almost as well as a scarecrow. And I just keep moving them around and it keeps them out of my garden. But that is the front of the house, which looks kind of strange because it looks more like it's towards the back, but it's actually where the original front of the house was. And it is quite tall, as you can see. And this is more towards the kitchen area. And I have a garden room um, right over in there where I keep my plants indoors. And it's south facing window, so it gets lots of light and I can grow quite a few things there. And as you can see, this is the garden today. This is two days after the initial videos that you saw. And I am going to be tearing out the peas that you can see right over in here. That will all be taken out because they are done and replaced with some new things. And I had mentioned my little toy poodles on that video as well. And there is one of them. She is 10 years old and her name is Thumbelina. As you saw, she just quirked her head like, hi, I'm Thumbelina. <laughs> and she is the best little dog ever. Um, so well trained. Um, it's, it's crazy. Anyway, this is my other little toy poodle. This is Elvira, and she is a lot bigger than my other one and younger. She is just over a year old and a ball of energy. Not quite as well trained as the other one is, and she barks, which causes the other one to then bark. So we're working on that with her. And as you can see, this is part of the flower garden area. I actually just picked up some more plants today. And this is along the fence line that I was talking about. I cleaned up some cabbage plants that I have to take over to the compost pile. And I had forgotten to mention that I have chamomile right here. It was actually my daughter that planted it. And they are coming up. And I had also forgotten to include the area where I have my roses. Which I had started to trellis just this season. I've got an extra red curry squash plant over here, as well as my asparagus patch, which this is the first year for my asparagus. I've had asparagus before, and I know that I don't harvest it this season and let it just go to fern. It'll be next year. We do need to mow. We're in that area of the yard where it needs to be mowed. It seems like this area needs to be mowed more often than the other. And then I have some more flowers over here planted, wildflowers, and some chives right here in this area. And if I back up a little bit, you can actually see this area a little bit better. Not very large, but has lots of plants. And then this is actually the compost side of area. Um, we are looking to get some sort of a bin to put these things in and a small chipper maybe. Um, but it does break down pretty well. I've been using some of it this year. And then I wanted to show my little garden shed, which is in, was included with this house. It's quite cute. It looks like a little house all of its own. But this is where I keep all of my garden tools and those sorts of things. We'll go inside and I'll show you. It's just a basic garden shed. The windows do work in it so I can move them up and down. They don't have any screens or anything. But it's just a garden shed. 
and we don't actually use that box of Roundup. Um, we it came in the house, so we have all of that here. We actually have a cabinet here that's full of pesticides that we do not use. And this is just kind of the carry-all junk area for potting stuff and extra outside light th fixtures and pruning stuff. It's kind of a mess, but there's not really any shelves in here right now because I had just cleaned everything out of here, um, which it'll need a second cleaning now. because It kind of stays open during the garden time. And this is sometimes where we put extra limbs and things that fall out of the trees. If you don't know Wyoming very well, um, they have a lot of cottonwoods and these cottonwoods do not have very much stability. So uh, tree limbs and things fall out of them constantly and we're picking them up. Um, and right now with COVID-19 going on, there hasn't been a whole lot of um, picking up by the city if you put it out to the curb. So we just generally keep it here. And then there was an, looks like a Wii or Xbox, don't know, rock band stuff that was in the house when we moved here. And it finally made its way outside and we've tried to get them to pick it up and they won't pick it up. So we're gonna have to probably take it off somewhere, I guess. Um, so that's one of the issues with Cheyenne, Wyoming is that the recycling and pickup is just not so great here. And then this is our garage. It is a four car garage, pretty large, but basic. It's just a basic garage. And this area of the garden that you saw in the video had the potatoes in it. I actually went ahead and looked at those potatoes and they were already done. They were my red potatoes and got quite a bit of a harvest out of them, better than I did the early Yukon Gold. So I went ahead and just took those out and they're boxed up right now, cleaned up and in the house. And then I replanted bok choy, early yellow squash, early zucchini, and also some early acorn squash. So we have all of that going here. I was going to put some beans here, but I'm a little bit afraid that the beans won't be ready in time before we get our first frost. The first frost in Cheyenne, Wyoming usually happens sometime in mid-September. Sometimes a little bit earlier, sometimes a little bit later. And I'm originally from East Tennessee um, in the mountains. So the weather in East Tennessee is not that much different than here, except for humidity. Um, I knew the last four years that I was in East Tennessee that we had snow all the way through until the middle of May with cold temperatures all the way through to the end of May. So not unusual there for it to be about the same as it is in Cheyenne, Wyoming. And as you can see, my watermelon already figured out that I'd taken out the potatoes and that is literally two days ago and they're already saying, hey, more area to move. So they're already spreading and there are little watermelons on it I had noticed yesterday and I hope that they get done in time. We've, we've not really had a good watermelon crop here yet so far. I had two last year. Um, so we're working on it. We're figuring out how to get things out earlier. Um, I had started my plants indoors, but I don't think that those plants really took off very well. So I ended up actually having to purchase black diamond watermelon plants and the yellow watermelons from Walmart or Lowe's, I can't remember which two, which of the two, because I got some plants there. But most of my plants, I start indoors. They are my seed that I gather at the end of the season. And that'll probably be the same thing I do with the corn, even though I'm not real sure if I'm gonna replant this corn next year, because as you can see, there were some bits of it that did not um, get bigger when they should have. Um, they're a little shaded, but not enough that it would have caused them to not come on. And I'm not sure exactly what was going on there. And they did have some organic fertilizer. Um, but unfortunately, they just didn't, for some reason, pick up. But most of the corn looks great. I'm getting ears already. And there goes my dogs into the house. We've actually got the kitchen door open. And as you can see, that is 
the other side of the house and it does need painting and some work at this point. Um, I've been living here for five years. And one of these days we'll do a tour inside when it is not so hectic because right now I'm getting ready to go make supper. We're having elk meat tonight. It's going to be elk meat meatloaf mixed with ground beef because it is so lean on the elk that it is difficult to get it to um, stick together very well. So we usually mix some ground beef with it. And that is the last look at the garden. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm going to be putting that at the end of my videos because I'm doing these videos for fun. They're not for anything else other than just fun. So I hope everyone enjoys it and sees that yes, you can grow things in Cheyenne, Wyoming, as well as own a big house and try to keep up on the maintenance of it. That's the, the worst part of owning a big house is maintenance. <laughs> So I wish everyone well. Hit that notification bell. Subscribe if you want. And we'll see you in the next video.